Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for tonight's presentation on the AeroView Touch and Integrated Panels brought to you by Bendix King and Social Flight. My name is Jeff Simon. I'm president of Social Flight. For those of you joining us for the first time, Social Flight is the free web and mobile app dedicated to supporting general aviation. Visit socialflight.com or download the free Social Flight mobile app for Apple or Android devices, and you will have access to over 10,000 aviation events, destinations, airport restaurants, and so much more. You'll even get a weekly email with a list of all the aviation events happening in your local area, and of course, webinars which are such an important source of education and entertainment during these challenging times. And that is why we are here tonight. Bendix King is one of the most iconic names in general aviation with a history that goes back to the beginning of modern avionics. As part of Honeywell, they produced avionics for nearly every segment of aviation, including transponders and ADSB products. And they have always been a thought leader in our community. Recently, Bendix King has partnered with a variety of best in-breed avionics providers to build an integrated suite of avionics around their AeroView touch system. And we have a very special guest presenter from Bendix King in Simon Williams, who comes to us this evening all the way from New Zealand to explain their strategy and products to you this evening. So before we get started, here's a few tips. First of all, a recording of tonight's presentation will be available on socialflight.com and on our YouTube channel. Just search for Social Flight on YouTube, one word. Usually takes us about 24 hours to get that recording edited and up on there for you to see. And we'll also send you a link by email after the presentation. Also, feel free to post questions during the presentation, and we'll do our best to integrate those questions into uh, our uh, pr discussion this evening. Now, there is a Q&A feature built into the webinar product, and so just post your questions there. We will do our best to answer them, and rest assured that if we do not get to your question this evening, uh, you will get an answer separately via email directly from Bendix King following the presentation. With that said, let's get started tonight with AeroView Touch Integrated Avionics Solutions from Bendix King. Tonight, we're going to talk about a number of different things. And of course, of course, Simon is going to do most of that talking. We will have an introduction, but also go over the Bendix King display technologies that are available, the AeroView Touch itself, installation, integration, and then also how you can actually uh, get one of these systems for your aircraft. I am so excited to have this opportunity to present with Simon Williams. Um, Simon is uh, the Bendix King sales manager for the uh, APAC and Africa regions. He's originally from the UK and uh, prior to joining the Royal Air Force, he studied and worked in electronic engineering uh, with the Ministry of Defense in there. Now, um, in some of the, the pre-discussions that I've had and work that I've done with Simon, it's been so interesting because he has this incredibly varied background. He qualified as an RAF flight engineer, flew on C-130Ks, as you can see here. He'll talk to you a little bit about that, emigrated to New Zealand in the mid-90s, and was even commissioned as an engineering officer as well in the Royal New Zealand Air Force. He's had many different roles in that regard and also uh, retired and then joined Airwork New Zealand where he has run the design and manufacturing department having to do with rotorcraft. This is someone who understands everything from the consumer and the, the defense end and the general aviation end. And he even worked at spider tracks in business development as well. He lives with his family next to the Air Force Base and not even going to pretend to try to pronounce it as to where it is in New Zealand. I will let him do that. Simon, welcome. Oh, thanks, Jeff. And uh, yeah, it's, she's a bit a uh, bit of a difficult thing to uh, to pronounce. Uh, Fanuapai, good, uh, which means good ground. Uh, and so that's I, I live in Auckland uh, with my family. Uh, and the picture you've got there is of uh, X-ray Victor 202, and I think it shows my age too. So I flew on that as a young man in the Royal Air Force, um, and that's in the RAF Cosford Museum that I went to a couple of years ago uh, with my late father. So it's a pretty special photo, uh, and interesting that it, uh, I'm now a, a museum piece myself. <laughs> I, I'm not going to put you there at all. I, I don't think that quite qualifies, but it must be pretty amazing to actually go to a museum and see an aircraft on display that you flew yourself. 
Oh yeah, because and and I, I um, ironically that one in particular, um, we used to do a Families Day flying when was it when I was in the Royal Air Force and Dad flew on that with me as the flight engineer and there we were in the uh, in the museum with it. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to see you know where where I started in aviation in terms of integration and avionics and where we've got to now um, and you know just unbelievable the changes you know, really in sort of 30, you know, 30 odd years, which sounds a lot, but it's not really when you think about it. Yeah. Now, do, do you, when you're there, do you, do you have that urge to climb up and sit in your old seat? Oh, so uh, if I put my webcam on now, you'd see the, um, as an engineering officer, I was pretty privileged as we, as we scrapped the older seats in the, uh, in the RNZAF, I purloined the flight engineer seat. So I sit on one in my office that the kids uh, all laugh at me on. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, a quick, uh, so uh, for everyone who's uh, with us already and dialed in, um, I will be, of course, uh, joining and helping a little bit with the presentation uh, from my perspective and my background as well here, as you can see, I'm AMP IA mechanic. I've been in the avionics industry now for over 20 years, pilot and aircraft owner, and also the maintenance columnist for AOPA Online. My focus in my life has been on promoting general aviation and convincing as many people as possible, not just to get their pilot's license, but to also get an aircraft and learn how to get involved with owner-assisted aircraft maintenance. Um, my experience during that time has, been, has allowed me to actually gain FAA STCs independently myself, as well as PMA, which stands for Parts Manufacturing Authority, on several aviation products. In fact, uh, my house is considered by the FAA to be a PMA manufacturing facility that gets it regularly inspected by them. Um, I produce modifications for Beechcraft, and, uh, as well as the FlexAlert multifunction enunciator. And of course, we're here because of social flight, and if I were to look behind me right here as to where we uh, where we are, I've got a T-51D Mustang that uh, you can see on YouTube. My boys and I are building here in our living room. So a little bit of that, I'll be the assistant here to Simon this evening. And uh, with that, let's get started talking about Bendix King Display Technologies and the AeroView. Oh, thanks, Jeff. So um, I think we're going to talk tonight about uh, the, the our AeroView range. So our AeroView range, it's the core product line that allows us to for the, to to uh, integrate with with our equipment um, and other people's equipment. So as a uh, really good example, and I think I talked to Jeff about this. We have a very open architecture. We talk to other people, uh, we talk to other other, other units, um, but to do that, we need a core display technology that goes across the platforms that we cover. So, uh, and it can be confusing when I say AeroView because there's sort of four, as you can see on the on the slide, there's four versions. So we range from the the X View Touch, which is for the light sport and experimental aircraft. Uh, good examples of that are uh, Joe Caraggio's uh, Lancair Legacy that we've uh, done for the ramp races. Uh, there's a great um, video and um, on YouTube and on the website of that of the installation that we've done with uh, with him and uh, the experience that he's got from that. Uh, and the um, Pipistrel um, Alpha King. So um, we've got, um, and I've got some pictures of the cockpits as well, which sort of uh, emphasizes uh, wh where this equipment goes. But uh, we've we're on the forward fit side of uh, of that market as well. Then we move into the AeroView Touch, which is the Part 23 Class 1 and 2, and the fixed wing, which I'm really excited about, um, Part 27 helicopters. So examples are there, are the Cessna, the Cessna uh, 182 you've got there, uh, 152, sorry, um, and uh, the AS350 uh, Squirrel, as we call it uh, in this part of the world, or the, or the A-Star, as you guys call it in, uh, in, in the States. Then we move into the AeroView Touch integrated flight deck. And again, we'll have some pictures of it in a minute, but that covers the Part 23 Class 3 fixed wing. And the classes, it gets confusing as to when or what's a class one, two, and three. Uh, it's all based upon weight and speed, and uh, it's defined by the FAA and the ASA. Um, so when we start talking in terms of classes, um, that's you know what we're talking in terms of, and and then it de it defines the avionics that you're allowed to you you have to install in your aircraft. Um, so the 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 class three um, is fixed wing. We call it the AeroView Touch Integrated Flight Deck, and then for the larger um, Part 23 Class Four, as we'd call it, or the early Part 25 aircraft. 
um, we've got the Aero View integrated flight deck. Uh, and we couldn't go on a presentation without a picture of a Herc. Um, but uh, again, it just emphasizes as well that we cover everything from the experimental market all the way through to that early part 25 and, and, and some of the military market. So it's a really, you know, as Jeff said, it's a really diverse market. Did you want to comment at all there, Jeff, or should we go on to the next slide? No, I think it's really fascinating to see that the same architecture that we're going to talk about throughout here has been uh, set up to cover all of these different classes. And I think that's that's quite important because one of the things that's important about bringing together all the different players in the market is you need to have standards that are going to be essentially monitored, held, and developed by Bendix King for this. But you also want the confidence that the product is is going to have a long life to it and be supported in the long term. And when you see uh, how it covers all of these different markets, I think that's uh, I think that really backs up the commitment to the product. Yeah, great. And, and I guess you, you, so you raise a really good point there about the um, uh, and the user experience for the pilot. The the Bendix King philosophy is that we give the same experience to the experimental pilot that the, the pilot in the Part 25 aircraft gets. So with our XView Touch, for instance, you get on board, you've got your flight plan on your um, uh, on your iPad, on your third-party uh, flight planning app. You upload that wirelessly to our device, and then you fly with our Synvis and, our, and, the, and the mapping system. Um, so you have that same feel. And that's the you know the reason why um, we, we're on a bunch of the trainers uh, so it gives the guy, the guys in the in the training world the same experience they're going to get when they eventually move on to the larger aircraft and the more complex aircraft. Right, that makes sense. So uh, if we go to the next slide, please. So uh, and we can go through these relatively quickly, but just this is the the uh, the the XView Touch for the Pipistrel Alpha King. This is a full suite of Bendix King equipment that we uh, we, we put on the aircraft. Uh, and as Jeff said, you know we've uh, we've teamed with some best in class partners. So on the the left hand side, that's our X sorry yeah that's our XView Touch. Uh, beneath that is our um, KT74 transponder. Then we've got on the right hand side the AeroNav. 800 and 900. So those are the the Aberdyne units that we've uh, we, we're, we've we've um, we've partnered on. And then above that is the uh, the KMA 30, and we've just brought out the Aero Panel 100, which is a uh, a more capable version of that panel. Uh, next slide, please. So the uh, the the, uh, the Cessna 182. This is uh, uh, an upgrade that we did uh, in house as a as a demonstrator. Uh, and again, it just shows that federated, integrated architecture of avionics. And Jeff and I have been talking about this over the last few days. Um, so you, on the pilot side, you've got the Aero View Touch in this case, not the X View Touch. So essentially the same product, but for the certified market. Down on the left-hand side, we've got the um, X Point, which is a, a partnership that we've done with um, JPI for engine instrumentation. Um, as we progress with the aero with the aero view touch, uh, those indications will come on, and you'll see those in later slides on the aero view touch. And then uh, again, the good old KO300 for a standby indicator. And we'll talk about standby choice, um, you know, later on in the presentation because I know that's important when you're planning your panel and planning the kit you're going to put on. And then in the center stack is the uh, um, aero nav, um, and that's the 910, which equates to the um, uh, Avidine 550 um, and then the uh, down at the bottom that's again a, a real Bendix King thing that's our KFC 230 autopilot so that's the replacement for the older uh, KFC 150s and cap 150s on uh, class one and two aircraft and uh, I'm currently working with a, a customer in New Zealand on uh, on a Malibu on those and it's been interesting to see um, how easy that is to install on the aircraft and Did one you want of the to sort things of talk? That, that's also interesting there that I like is, of course, the uh, the button controls, the dials that you've got at the balance uh, there, which can be what vertical and horizontally mount mounted. Yeah, really good point. So the the uh, and we'll talk a little bit about the uh, the air review touch as we go through an X view touch, but uh, you know, quite right, Jeff, it's uh, touch screen display technology. But you know, we acknowledge, especially on the Hilo, that uh, there's times when you, the pilot wants to, um, to to have some traditional course heading and uh, and, and selection uh, buttons. So we've got that selector panel down beneath the autopilot, uh, and that can be in uh, pla in portrait or landscape, as you say, uh, and it's just the matter of ordering the right part. 
Yeah, and I've used them both uh, barehanded and with gloves. They work extremely well. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, perfect. So this is uh, this is uh, and I'm this is um, the project we're doing uh, in New Zealand uh, with Airwork, with Airwork New Zealand. Uh, really proud of uh, how we've gone with this. It's been a really interesting journey. Um, so this is the um, AeroView Touch H on the right hand side. We've called it the HeliView Touch um, as the overall package that we're doing with Airwork. Um, but essentially. Um, the AeroView Touch on the right-hand side for the pilot. Uh, we've incorporated the AeroNav range, so the um, eight, 8 through 900 um, series. Um, and then I think it's a really good example, Jeff. We talk how we we talk to other other units. So for the international market, um, we talked about this in the design review. When when you work in, um, in in the commercial world, you often find you get the helicopter coming to the hangar and you rip all the gear out because it's an EMS fit and you push it back out and it goes out and you utility fit. And we were determined that the a minimum amount of um, changes would need to be made for the helicopter. So we, uh, we've used the, the L3 Lynx um, um, ADSB TAS TCAS transponder. And what that allows is a, is a, a utility operator that uses the squirrel um, for something like a UN contract or a, or a forestry contract. They're able to um, install the gear initially and then up, progressively upgrade through software as opposed to ripping boxes out and rewiring. So you can do ADSB out, TAS and TCAS1. So it's a really good example of the collaboration that we do. And then the uh, AeroView Touch integrated flight deck. So this is uh, the three screen display system that we're using on the class three aircraft um, and uh, it uses two AeroView Touch systems uh, and then the center display where we do engines and it's got a, um, a and the other side of the display uh, as an MFD. In the event we um, there's a there's an emergency and you go down to the battery the center screen becomes a um, becomes your uh, standby instrument and uh, that was a, 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 a an innovation by Freddie Zanuzzi, my boss, it was his his idea, a great idea. And what that does, it gives you a standby which maintains your ADI, HSI, your synthetic vision, and your moving map. So in the event, I mean, it's pretty unlikely, but if you get into that into that case, you've got really good situational awareness that you may not have on a small standby. And then the, the class four, this is the AeroView integrated flight deck. So this is for the, the beach, the, uh, the, the King Air B200. Um, we're, it's going on to the, the, uh, the, the 1900. Um, we're looking at uh, a bunch of other aircraft like the Embraer 120. Um, and it really does come down from the Primus Epic uh, range of aircraft. You'll, you'll look all the way, and we'll, we'll look at the AeroView Touch in a minute, but a bunch of the standard Honeywell functions that you get, the center screen's a really good example. The vertical situation display on the center, center display down at the bottom, that's standard throughout our range, uh, and you'll see that on the AeroView Touch. Um, the synthetic vision that you can see on the, on the pilots, both pilots' displays, beautifully rendered, uh, one of the, the, the best database in the world. Um, and again, that's standard through the range. Um, I was lucky enough to go for a flight uh, between Phoenix and Albuquerque on this um, early on this month, and it was just amazing to, to the pilot. They got me into the the, uh, the co-pilot seat um, halfway across to to work through it, uh, and it really is no more than two touches. And the cursor control device is a, it's a real pleasure to use. Quite different from that older FMS technology that you know I was putting and integrating with the Air Force ten years ago. Okay, so this is the, the sort of crux of the uh, of the of the of the talk tonight. The uh, the AeroView Touch. If we go to the next slide, so this is the AeroView and XView Touch, which is the uh, for the as we said before for the class for the experimental light sport, class one and two and part twenty seven, and then with a uh, with with a little bit more equipment for that um, class three um, larger part twenty three aircraft. Next slide, please. So the the uh, the AeroView AeroView and XView Touch we uh, we provide a federated integrated suite of avionics that again you know really want to emphasise what Jeff talked about before we work with best in class people um, and and use our own equipment as well to provide a really federated integrated suite we acknowledge that 
you can't always afford to buy an entire suite of uh, equipment. So uh, we do talk to other uh, equipment and, and we'll talk about that later on. Um, but basically with Bendix King, we've got the full range of equipment and it's quite unique how we do it. So up, up at the top, we've got the Aero Cruise and I know Andrew did a great uh, webinar with you, Jeff, um, last week, but the- Yeah, that's, X, a, that's, the, a, that's a great unit, love it. Yeah, and it's such a cool uh, piece of kit. Um, and, you know, was True Track, and, you know, we work with them, and now True Track are part of Bendix King. Right. And, and, and we're that, putting that in our Mustangs, uh, Simon, as well. Yeah, it's been real. Yeah, I look, it's such a successful product, and I sort of get talked to talk about it all the time. Uh, and you know, having Andrew on board just so good for uh, for, the, for the tech support and for the you know for me as a, as a sales guy. There's a great tool that he's just put together um, for selecting the right parts for it because it's uh, man, it goes into so many aircraft. But yeah, you're right, great piece of kit. And then yeah. the Aero Cruise 230. Sorry. Matter of fact, if if I go around the board here, there's uh, uh, we're we're probably wiring up about half of what you've got on your slide here. So we certainly got confidence in it. <laughs> yeah, and you know, then you know, the Aero Cruise 230. We've talked about it. It's a slot in replacement for the KFC 150 and uh, KAP 150 to a degree, uh, and some of those older aircraft. Um, it goes in. It gives you a digital computer, and and again, it's the real Bendix King thing. We warrant um, the existing servos in those aircraft for two years as part of the deal. It's a great, uh, great package. And then uh, you can see the AeroView Touch that we've got in the center. That's um, with the, the, the next release of software with the engine instruments on. So we teamed with uh, JPI uh, for the Aero Point range. Uh, and the next iteration will be that uh, small screen of engine instruments as well. So you get a really capable touchscreen display technology. And you can see you know, the beautiful rendered uh, Honeywell Smart View and synthetic vision that again is standard throughout our range uh, that you know, we saw really on the um, AeroView. And then down at the bottom in orange, the Aero Corder, a little bit different for a, uh, a, a sort of a small GA discussion, but um, shows sort of ex ex shows what we're looking at at the moment. Um, we provide a, a low cost, um, high functioning, meets the, all the latest requirements. It's the lightest uh, recorder on the market in combi, uh, CV and FDR um, modes. Um, and uh, we've, we've partnered with a, a, a company on that to, to, to produce the Aero Corder. Um, and again, it's for that commercial, the commercial side. So it sort of shows how, you know, we do range that full span of, uh, of recreational and commercial GA. Definitely. So the advanced features of the, and, and we've got to run through the video with me talking, I uh, do a lot of talking tonight, but a, a video of me talking in a minute on the, on the Hilo one. Um, but it's a really high resolution display, um, un, you know, un, unbelievable. The first time I saw it uh, was this time last year when I first joined Bendix and, uh, uh, and I went out to, um, to Friedrichshaf and um, was lucky enough to go to Aero. And it is an amazing um, uh, resolution. Um, it, as I've said before, and I can't really emphasize it anymore, it has the Honeywell Smart View Synthetic Vision. It is simply the best. It is beautiful. Uh, as you get closer to the ground, the rendering comes in, and it gives you that picture that when you look out and you go, crikey, where am I? You can look down, see where you are, have a look at your map, and, and uh, get yourself into a safe situation. Um, all of our uh, devices are all about uh, connectivity. Um, so everything is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth loadable, so you're able to upload your maps and charts over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, it's an infrared touchscreen, as we said before, so gloved or, um, or fingered hands can, um, can use it. Uh, it's got PFD and MFD modes, and we'll look a little bit more about that in the, in the briefing, and then charts and maps that are relevant for your region. Um, so uh, the, uh, um, the features and benefits, I, I quite like this table. It's not the most beautiful in the world, but it, uh, it really gets the, gets the point across. So um, we give you an improved situational awareness by having the smart view synthetic vision. There's a terrain, um, there's a terrain awareness as, as, as part, which gives you a clear, which gives you a tours like uh, display when uh, you start to get close to the ground. Normally, a normal normal operation, you get a vertical situation display, as we said before. So you get that same look and feel in the uh, in the smaller market that you get in the in the larger market. Uh, it's an intuitive menu structure, so uh, we've said no more than two, you know, four, but most of the time, no more than two touches to get anywhere. The display is really high resolution. Um, and the remote control panel for turbulent situations, that really helps out, especially for those rotorcraft guys. 
uh, and we've optimized the button um, sizes uh, to reduce missed touches and our industrial designer did a study on that and we've got about a 90% uh, touch accuracy, accuracy excuse me again emphasizing the Wi-Fi upload over um, of databases and handheld devices um, and again Seattle we do that with the, our friends from Seattle runways uh, I was talking to them this morning about that um, and uh, a mobile app for all databases and options again which is you know great and sort of brings us um, you know well into this 21st century with the, with the system uh, it remembers pilot selections on charts and we're compatible with many avionics brands so again we really acknowledge that you know while I, I'd like to sell you all of my gear often if you've installed something um, you know a few months before and you've said hey, I want to hit, hit Bendix King we're compatible with a broad amount of avionics so, uh, and let's talk a little bit about the the databases on that. So, the databases, as you mentioned, they're what, what Seattle Avionics, you said, and they all come from um, uh, like Wi-Fi uploads. Yeah. So, um, we've uh, so Seattle Avionics provide um, maps and charts uh, for the AeroView for the AeroView system, and now for the AeroView Touch. Um, for the US-based customers uh, and European customers, it's a, a subscription service. And you can download um, on your on your uh, smart device, and then you get out to the aircraft, and it updates over Wi-Fi. And we're just bringing that in for the international customers. So, funnily enough, I was just discussing with them this morning about Australia, New Zealand, um, and the the African regions. Uh, and the whole idea is that um, the pilot gets onto the aircraft. Um, you've got a um, a flight planning app that you've got your flight plan into you upload that into one of our navigators so the um, aero nav navigators are compatible with a range of third-party planning tools right. that comes up and then you've got your uh, flight plan on the screen and then on the screen you've got a relevant map for your region that looks the same as the map on your um, iPad so you can use the primary avionics to uh, to, to, to navigate and um, and operate uh, and use your iPad for the flight plan and function that it's meant to be and I assume that works also then with Seattle Avionics FlyQ, and uh, I've been a user of that for for quite a while. And they they just keep innovating and pumping those uh, those new releases out. So that that's pretty cool to get that to work uh, directly with the AeroView. Yeah, I was talking to the guys this morning, and it, and it works with the whole AeroView range. Um, so yeah, it is a great piece of kit. Um, in the in international market, it's a little different. So uh, they upload their maps onto uh, on um, onto onto the AeroView and XView Touch. Um, and the third-party planning, planning apps like Oz Runways, like ForeFlight, um, they are able to upload flight plans wirelessly through the navigator to the, um, the touch systems. Excellent. Uh, and then compatibility. Um, I don't intend to, to read off a list of compatible, compatible um, items. I think we'd be here all night. Um, but um, the list is growing, uh, and I think the message to this slide is we've got a range of our equipment and other best in brand equipment that we we're, we're compatible with and the list is growing so i said before we've um one of the big things that we're going to bring out are um there's a some autopilot um additional integrate integrations that we're going to do for the x view and aero view um and then additionally um the engine indications they're due out this year as well um which again it gives you that um small sliver on the the left hand side and that again gives us that same look and feel as that big big aero view as we call it that goes into the king air and those larger aircraft right well you know i think that's a really important thing even without going through the details of the slide itself to to spend a, a quick moment on and, and yeah. what the importance is uh you know it's it, it's becoming more and more of an issue, I think, from what I'm seeing in the industry and what I'm hearing from people and seeing on the internet chat groups as well, um, for folks that, that are locked into other solutions that don't integrate with other products. Because the fact is, is that the industry moves, the regulations move, the technology moves, and yeah. things come and go with all sorts of companies. And I think it, the, just what you showed of the criticality where you were trying to consolidate avionics and consolidate things like TAWS and other views in that air, in the helicopter, and that you were able then to integrate with the, the L3 uh, uh, Harris product with the Lynx, um, I think that that just shows that yet it's really important to somehow balance this fully integrated cockpit 
with a big screen display, with everything that you can control easily and that everything talks to one another, with that ability to still be able to have the flexibility of plugging and playing if things you know need to change down the road. Um, be, because that certainly, as I said, that you know, as as we out in the field can are, are popping in ADSB systems and upgrading and changing displays around. There's a lot of people with systems that came as a complete flight deck that don't have any of those abilities, and they have to sit back and wait for the manufacturer to do it. And this model, I think, uh, is a model for the future. I think that this this covers that. Yeah, I think I think you're right, Jeff. I mean, it just um, this this it is, this is a model for the the GA market. GA for me being, as I've said before, I can't stress it enough. Everything from light sport and experimental all the way through to uh, what I'd call commercial general aviation uh, and some military. So you know we have to have this federated solution um, to 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 to, um, to to work with our customers. Right. So this is the AeroView Touch in primary flight display and multifunction display mode. So effectively the split 10 inch screen will look like this to you. On the left hand side is the primary flight display with the Honeywell Smart View synthetic vision, whether that's for the helicopter or for the fixed wing and whether it's for certified or experimental. On the left hand side, you've got the standard speed tapes that we put on all our aircraft with uh, bugs commensurate with the uh, the aircraft speeds on the right hand side have the uh, altimeter again altimeter tapes which is standard on all of our our product ranges in this case we have a, a rad alt uh, being controlled and displayed by the AeroView touch which is part of the helicopter package at the moment then there's the standard honeywell transparent ADIs and HSIs and in this case you'll notice the aircraft is flying a little faster for the demo um, and we also have the helicopter symbology if you've got a fixed wing aircraft it has the fixed wing symbology on the right hand side you have got the multifunction display in this case this is the base map we're able to display traffic uh, on, on this map as well and then the bottom section is the vertical situation display which is a terrain awareness um, system that's standard with all of with the, all of the X view and AeroView touch range. So in this case, the helicopter is safe. It's uh, not flying. Uh, it's not flying close to the ground. So the terrain is green and yellow. As it gets closer, the terrain gets a different colour. Similarly, with the uh, synthetic vision, the the ground is rendered. And as you get closer, you'll get more rendering um, to give you that situational awareness uh, as to where you are in the world. We've now got on the right hand side on the multifunction display, the moving map with a local map brought up. In this case, it's the Canberra local VFR chart that the helicopter's flying over. And we upload, as we've said in the brief, these maps are uploaded wirelessly from a, a, a smart device like an iPad or a um, or a tablet from the third party uh, flight planning app up onto the area view touch. So one last transition I think it is now where, where while we uh, the aircraft flies through and it now moves it should now move through into the full screen mode. So the full screen mode removes the the right hand display which has got the map and the vertical situation display and gives the pilot a uh, a full synthetic view display of the local area. And it's worth mentioning just the uh, standard, uh, the clarity and the standard of our synthetic view. So it is the Honeywell Smart View Synthetic Vision, which is standard throughout our range. So beautifully rendered, really, really great situational awareness tool and, and simply uh, from uh, the best in the world. Um, so in terms of installation, the installation process, you know, I think the, you know, the theme this afternoon is that we've, uh, or this morning or this evening, wherever you are, um, has been that um, everything flows down from the, the commercial operators. So, you know, as a commercial operator, sort of really used to planning what you do, uh, you know, making sure that your removals and your preps are done, um, that you've designed and you've got your panel, what you want to do uh, and what you're going to install and what configuration uh, is it, it, you, you're gonna you want at the end of everything, and and whether that's uh, as a home builder or as a commercial operator, um, the the principles remain the same. You know, measure once, measure twice, 
cut once, drill once, you know, measure measure once, drill once, and make sure that you know what the one of the worst things and it's happened to me, uh, I can say on on three or four occasions in my commercial career where we maybe haven't got the requirements right, and the guys have cut holes in panels and then beautiful panels have got holes they don't need in anymore. So it's, um, I guess the whole big thing here is you know plan, plan, plan. Go to the next slide, please. So again, panel planning, uh, and again, you know, whether you're doing a, a fleet of 15 helicopters or you're doing a, an aircraft um, in the hangar, um, an, an aircraft at home, the whole idea is, you know, go and plan that panel out. Uh, we can supply um, cutouts and, uh, um, and and CAD files. I've done that too. There's a customer I'm dealing with in Australia at the moment that I've um, provided those to just recently, and we can do that very easily for Air of You Touch. So if you've got a CAD tool, you can you know move it around the panel a bit, and then uh, you know get that uh, that that panel laser cut or water cut um, to your requirements. Um, did you want to talk a bit at all about that, Jeff? I mean, you've got a significant amount of experience in, by the sound of it, in uh, terms of um, home build and uh, putting stuff together yourself. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'll tell you, the CAD being giving out the CAD file is a huge help uh, along the way, to say the least. Uh, whether someone's working to do it themselves, or they're looking to just mock it up, or they just uh, want the ability to work directly with Navionics Shop, that's going to do a, a panel cutout for them. And um, I, I can say, other companies I have not been able to get CAD cutouts for, so this this is really helpful. Yeah, I've, I've done it. In fact, it's a really good point. I've, I mean, I've got a, uh, a chap in Australia that's doing it himself. He's a very, very competent engineer uh, in, a, in, a, in another industry. And uh, we've been talking over the last couple of weeks. Um, but I've also, like you say, given it to a dealer who's then helped uh, a customer that maybe not hasn't got the, the CAD ability. So, um, yeah, providing those files, it works really, really well. Um, and then backup requirements. Um, there's a there's a dull chart that I won't talk through there, it's a, but I think it's a really interesting um, di a discussion point about uh, regulatory requirements. Regulatory requirements are, are the same but different. I think that's one of the best things that best statements I've heard on the, on regulatory requirements. So wherever you are in the world, depending on where you are, it will be there's always very slight and subtle changes. So in terms of uh, you know a backup instrument. Uh, the Mighty KO300 uh, will, will meet most of the requirements of the cockpits we've talked about today, but it's all about what your regulator requires, what your mission is, you know, what type of flying you're doing, where you're going to do it, how you're going to do it. So, um, you know, just can I can't emphasize more. Go and talk to your dealer if you're dealing with a dealer, or even call the regulator. Uh, certainly in New Zealand, our guys are really good on this sort of stuff. So you know what, we'd I'd call up the the guys at the aircraft certification unit if I couldn't find something, have a chat, say I'm going to do this. What do you think? And then make sure that what you don't want to do, especially in the international market, is buy something that's good for the US that you then get home from, say Oshkosh or something like that, and it's not good for you. So you know having that local knowledge before you do this goes back to that plan 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 um, for that installation absolutely and and when you look at this uh, follow that flow chart because it really does follow the FARs and what's so important about it and that includes you know whether you have standbys whether you have a vacuum system in the aircraft or you're using only electrical backup what's required in terms of battery uh, and, and your electrical capacity there's a lot of things to really consider to, and and this is completely agnostic of what solution you're putting in. Any time yeah. that you are looking to put glass in your panel, um, you're going to need to think about whether you're keeping old instruments as backup and whether you can ditch your vacuum pump. And if so, what's going to be required? And the, the guidelines that you're going to face in most cases is, first of all, making sure that you're dealing with essentially tso units when you're dealing with backups in most cases. Um, and in addition to that, they want to see independent sources. Uh, they want to see that that uh, both the two different products that you have use independent sources, have independent power supplies. There's quite a bit to it to keep us safe because redundancy is, of course, the essence of safe aviation. Yeah, well said, Jeff. Well said. 
and so again look up I, I know it's another one but uh having had some uh, some uh some bad experiences of uh <laughs> of getting stuff back from the cutters with the wrong holes in um you know plan your panel look at what you're going to do um you know look at your mission look at the, the expansion the future growth um so in terms of a really good example is the the airwork guys on the helicopter um they provide a panel that's got um that's got mandatory items and it's also got cutouts on there that will allow uh, your mechanic or yourself uh, when you, in, in the future to open out the panel uh, and put uh, different bits of equipment in um, and you know there's so many places on the market now that do laser cutting and that will do water jet cutting that can give you a really sharp panel uh, and that could do you know like the airwork that guys have done have blanks in there so that it becomes easy to cut out if you do upgrade in the future And then the post installation checkout, and again, I sort of come from um, sort of talking with some of my more commercial customers, but I was out with the guys on the first um, Hilo that we're just starting to, with, with about to start test flying, um, and you know, it's pretty standard, um, s standard bullets for what you want to do for that first installation checkout, whether it's you know um, a helicopter or a fixed wing. So you know, the display comes on, we make sure that the sensors are installed. Um, in terms of the air of your touch, you know, just making sure that uh, you've installed the Adahars in the appropriate place on the aircraft. Um, so again, it's always worth getting a bit of guidance from your dealer or from um, from from your your local your local expert in, for, for for sensors like that, so that we're not chasing faults later on down. Uh, making sure that all your interfaces and your wiring is is, uh, is done properly, and then the integration of radios and navigation. Um, and then upload of databases. So, you know, pretty simple with the Airview Touch in that, um, you know, we go through Seattle Avionics uh, and it's uh, and the My Wingman services, uh, and it can be loaded up, as I said, either Wi-Fi or that first um, upload, even over, you'll see on the front, on the left-hand side, there's a USB-C, um, and I've um, uploaded uh, my demo kit, you know, numerous times using that uh, when I've got a big load of, um, you know, new load of software, and it works really, really well because it's fast uh, and it's easy to put in, and it's on the front of the units. So again, the whole idea behind that, from an industrial design perspective, was for ease of loading and ease of uploading. You know, and you think about those fleets with, you know, 20 helicopters, you've got to go do an upgrade. Um, you want to make it simple, uh, and that again flows down to you as the small user or operator okay so the sales options look at uh, uh, yeah uh, the today was talking about product and talking about what, what you know what uh, you know how our product looks but uh, you know there were uh, how to buy it so we've got um, the my avionics app which is available on the App Store if you download it uh, take a photo of your um, aircraft and you uh, put your details into it and you upload it to us will give you a 10% discount um, and um, that, that covers um, the, the Bendix King product. So yeah, if you do that, give us your panel photo, um, you'll get a 10% discount. So uh, yeah, if you're gonna, please use it, it's on the app, app store, it's pretty simple to use. If you get any issues or problems, call your local sales manager or your local dealer and they can help you out with it. Yeah, and a quick tip about that is uh, do your search under Honeywell International. It's actually listed under Honeywell, and the My, My Avionics app is great just because, again, it's any Bendix King product. 10% is a big deal, and uh, uh, with so much legacy equipment out there and new equipment that people are looking to put in, I think that's a great opportunity. Right, yeah, next slide, please. Um, and then, and then, uh, you know, when you go to buy the equipment, it just—it's always good to explain how how we operate. So um, we we have a, a a system of dealers and distributors. So you'll buy the equipment. Uh, you'll say, okay, I want to buy an Air Review Touch. So you'll uh, go to your local dealers. So your local dealer is listed um, on our website under under buy. Um, and then the and then for those. Uh, potential dealers that are online with us now just a shout out to our distribution network so we have a distribution network worldwide and we've got partners uh, Edmo, VSE, Avial, Transworld and the United Aero Group um, and I don't want to labor today you know on, on, on the process and what to do but there's some really simple uh, videos that we've just put up online on how to buy where to buy it from and how to work and we're always looking uh, to work with our dealers to uh, to make sure that the uh, the parts get to you as quickly as possible um, and that the dealers are always working with these uh, distributors depending on where they are located in the globe 
Um, and then uh, again, this works probably for the, the larger operators. Um, so we have a, what we call a total avionics plan. So uh, certification, installation, equipment, um, and the um, and the confidence plan element, which we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, essentially, the uh, the the um, the extended warranty that's all wrapped up, and it could be paid on a monthly basis. So works for some of those bigger operators. So you know, flight schools with eight or nine aircraft that want to do a uh, a whole avionics upgrade. Um, and uh, maybe haven't got the capital to do that. This is a great opportunity to um, uh, to, to do it. And so we we're starting to um, uh, use this with a, a bunch of uh, bigger operators. And then the confidence plan. This is really for everybody. So I mean, I talked early on about the the KFC 230 and and how we provide an, uh, a warranty on your um, uh, on your um, servos. Well, this is just an extension of of of, of the of the of the warranty where if you've got the equipment you can extend your warranty with the confidence plan and have the confidence that uh, if there is a failure we'll replace the uh, the component and i've recently um, used the confidence plans with a pc12 operator down here in the southern hemisphere um with the with, with some of the legacy pieces of equipment but you know for this forum if you're buying it's certainly worth talking to your dealer about hey what about an extended warranty on this how do i do it it's it is relatively uh, relatively cheap in terms of cost and it gives you that assurity for you know aviation is an expensive business so as we go into some questions here simon of one certainly that came in had to do with do we have any examples now for approximately approximate install times for an aeroview touch system let's assume maybe you know single panel like the 182 was so it's it's a pretty simple install because there's it's a four bolt i mean essentially four bolts on the front of that in that that, uh, that display um and um, uh, and and then the Adahars and magnetometer. It really is a single, very much small cable in. So if it's planned with the removals, you should be able to install in you know a couple of days really. By the time you've got the gear in and you've uh, you know got got all all your parts together, so it's a relatively simple installation. The biggest thing is the removals. Uh, once you've done those removals, it's 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 you know very very simple. Yeah, I think I that think, the okay. challenge always always tends to be whether it's the the removal and dealing with whatever you know one thing leads to another there, yeah. or also access to the data integration for the other products that you have there. So in theory, if you had let's say that you were you needed uh, data from uh, RS two thirty two coming from uh, one of your units for for traffic or for something or four twenty two or four twenty nine, those are twisted pairs like two wires. And if you needed yeah. that, uh, let's say, two or three connections to the different avionics you had, well, if you had those wires in hand, then wiring up the connector and getting this all set up is very, very straightforward. And as Simon said, can be a couple day job to get everything done, including even getting your panel cut. If, however, the reality of your job is that go, getting in there, mapping out what you need to do for wiring, because it's all about planning, and then also, getting those pins into something that like as a connector from you know five or ten years ago that hasn't had those pins wired before that that's where a lot of the complexity for some of these installations does come from but in general i will say from what i've seen the back of these units it's very clean and it's a very simple installation yeah there's no moving parts or fans required for the um air of you touch so um i mean again it's it that cuts down on wire count it cuts down on complexity um it's very clever how it's uh, the cooling is done uh and and uh, that was all part of the innovation so it is a really like i say a really really simple install um and as you say the biggest thing is that is that is that whole removals and how far you go with those removals right well, we've basically come to the end of our evening and definitely appreciate everyone's time here. Simon, thank you so much for taking the time to explain all of this. And, and I see that your contact information is here on the screen. Yes, sir. Uh, and yeah, look, th thanks very much, Jeff. That was that was great and really enjoyed, really enjoyed this. Um, and please feel free to contact me um, or anybody else within the, uh, the international or domestic sales team. Uh, happy to hear from you um, and, and look forward to seeing you uh, at a show as soon as we start opening up again, uh, potentially Oshkosh, fingers crossed. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Um, so <laughs> again, all the contact information is here. For more information about Bendix King and all, all the other videos that we've done in the past, webinars, and of course, and most importantly, upcoming webinars, 
please check out Social Flight. Again, socialflight.com and the free Social Flight mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. In addition to that, you can go to our YouTube channel, search for one word, Social Flight, and you will be able to see recording of tonight's presentation as well as the others. Usually it takes about 24 hours for us to get that up and it will include an edited version of the video that you saw there. So if anyone had any audio issues, you'll be able to hear the entire thing through. For Bendix King and Social Flight, and my thanks to them, I'm Jeff Simon, Blue Skies.